very happy to say that uh, we're going to have Jason O'Neill talking to us about a note on KY's Odd Town. Yeah, thank you, uh, Sam, for the uh, for the introduction. Uh, this is probably the fourth or fifth time Sam has heard me talk about this. Uh, this is a project with our common advisor that I worked on when we were roommates for the most part. So um, yeah, so I'm going to start with just making some uh, notation that should be familiar to everyone, um, but just in case. Um, I also like to do this to warm up, you know, vocally. Uh, so brackets n is just the first n uh, positive integers. So it's a set of that. Um, and we are going to be considering collection of subsets of brackets n. And so to denote that we do two to the brackets n. Um, and so this is the collection of uh, subsets of brackets n. Um, yes, okay. And I guess you can also be equal to the whole set. Um, and then the other piece of notation, I guess, from extremal set theory is brackets n choose k, uh, which is all, um, I guess, elements of two to the brackets n that have size exactly k. Um, and the type of question we're going to consider is primarily the middle term, but we're going to consider a subfamily of that that has certain properties. And we're going to ask how large can such a uh, subfamily of two to the brackets n be? Okay. Um, and so the, the classical result along these lines is called odd town theorem or odd town rules. And so what we have is we have a subfamily of two to the brackets n, so a collection of subsets where uh, each subset uh, is odd. So its size is odd. Um, and each pair of distinct subsets in my collection uh, is even. And the, the question we ask is, well, how large of a collection of subsets can I have while adhering to these, uh, these rules? Um, and so this is somewhat of a classical result. Uh, but the answer is, if I have a subfamily which satisfies the rules, so the, the, the sets themselves have odd cardinality and the pairwise intersections are even, then I cannot have more than n of them. Um, and, and the proof of this, let me just say a couple lines, proof, uh, what do you do? You take these sets, a1 up to am, and you consider the characteristic vector, uh, I'll just call it x1, x1 up to xm, and you view it as a vector in f2 to the n, um, and you can do some inner product stuff to get that this is actually an orthogonal, uh, actually not necessarily a basis, but uh, independent set. And in particular, it has to be less than the dimension of the underlying vector space, which is n. Um, and so I'm kind of skipping details, but that's the that's the idea. Um, and you might ask, is this best possible? Can we actually find a collection of subsets that uh, achieve uh, the size n? And there there are many ways of doing this. Uh, so the first way is to let my collection a consist of all the singletons. Um, so here, I li lies between one and n. Um, and let me just say out loud. So each collection of subsets in A has size one, and so in particular is odd. Um, and if I take two distinct pairs, I and J, well, they don't have anything in common. So the intersection is zero, in particular even. Uh, and the size of this is n. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Um, another thing you can do is uh, uh, just assume that n is equal to zero mod four. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a uh, k43, which I won't draw. Uh, actually, so a k43 which in the notation of this talk is all 
uh, subsets of brackets four of size three. And I'm just going to take uh, n over four uh, vertex disjoint copies of this. Um, and so if I have a set, okay, so I guess the first observation is each set has size three. So that's odd. Uh, and then the second observation is if I have a pair of sets in my collection, they either come from the same blob or they don't come from the same blob. If they're from different blobs, well, then of course they have no vertices in common. So the intersection is zero. If they come from the same blob, then they have to be different. Um, and then you can check that that intersection has to be size two, which is also even. Um, and you know you can continue. You can continue with um, n equals zero mod six, or zero mod any even integer. Um, and you can also sort of take uh, you know combinations of these things. So there are there are a lot of different extremal ways of getting uh, exactly n. Okay. The other uh, classical result is even town rules. Uh, so we have more or less the same question, but I, I'm going to change one condition. And that's the set of each, sorry, the size of each set in my family is now even. Um, and we still have the pairwise intersections are even. Um, and the question is how large can we have while adhering to these rules? Um, and it turns out the answer is much, much bigger. Uh, so it's actually exponential, uh, two to the roughly two to the n over two, um, and the proof is a little bit more complicated, but it's it's very similar where you you know consider the vectors in f two to the n, uh, and then you say something about the orthogonal complement, um, and you get a similar rank type argument. Um, so and then the construction is oh. <laughs> That's, let's see, okay, um, let me erase that. So the construction, what do we do? Well, for each thing in my ground set, I pair it with something. Um, so that we get, and let's just assume N is even. So we get N over two uh, pairs, um, which I will label X1, x2, x, n over 2. Um, and then now what do I do? I let my family A be um, the collection of possible unions of the xi. So um, yeah, technically, I guess i is in some subset of 2 to the n over 2. Um, Yes, okay, so this is my family. And the important thing to note is, since I'm taking unions of even size sets, the size of the set's gonna be even. Um, and any intersection, also it itself has to be a uh, disjoint union of even size sets. So this will satisfy the condition of even town rules, and it does have uh, roughly this size. So I'm, I'm partially lying to you when the ground set is odd, but uh, you can do some stuff there too. Okay. Uh, now we're going to get into another another version of, of odd town. Um, this is actually my second favorite version of odd town. So uh, <laughs> I, you know, there's odd town, there's even town, there's skew odd town. My favorite version is uh, introduced by <laughs> Um, everyone's favorite celebrity. It's called Flavor Town. Um, <laughs> Guy Fieri. Um, anyways, I have to use that joke every time I give this talk. Um, so, so now what do we have? We have two set families, A and B. Um, and what we want to do is we want to consider the pairwise intersections where we take one set from each family. Um, and right, so Maybe I'll draw a picture. So here's A1, here's A2, all the way up to AM. Uh, 
and then I have B1, B2, all the way up to Bm. And the idea is I want a collection of two families such that when I take an intersection like this, A1 intersection B1, this is going to be odd. But if I take one like this or this, it's even. And uh, to see that this is really a generalization of, of classical odd town, if I let my family A equal B, so uh, what I mean by this is AI equals BI for all I, uh, we get that the resulting family satisfies odd town rules. So this is a generalization of this classical odd town uh, result. Um, and so the, the result you get at the end is you can't have more than the ground set. Um, and so what we worked on is trying to come up with an analog of the skew odd town theorem for K set families. Um, and so here we want K to be more than uh, two. So if I have maybe three of these families, you might ask, well, um, what kind of conditions can you ask on the three wise intersections or you know, extending this, what if I have K families? And so our first result says, suppose we have K of these families and you can kind of do a similar, uh, you have to get a little bit more careful with the notation, but you can similarly arrange them in a, an array. Um, and if I want to force the intersections that have one or that have K distinct uh, indices to be even, and the ones that, um, you know, they could look like this, or they could even look like, you know, they have one thing in common, and then otherwise they're, these ones are odd. Uh, it turns out the best you can do is n to the one over uh, this thing. So what does that mean? It means when k equals six, we get um, n to the one third. So we actually have to be much smaller than the classical skew odd town uh, result. Um, and let me just say a little bit about, um, I guess the proof. Um, so the first thing is there are constructions that show that this is best possible. Um, and in order to do this, there's a connection to a classical um, Graham Pollock extension of, uh, um, or hypergraph extension of the Graham Pollock theorem that Steve talked about yesterday. Um, and you sort of encode such a covering in terms of these collection of families. Um, and so that's the, I guess in some sense, it's a lower bound. Um, and then the upper bound comes from, wait, maybe I'm mixing it. No, the lower bound comes from a rank type argument, lower bound. So this proof is a, a rank type argument. of uh, a, this thing called the Kinesar graph. Um, right, okay. So that's the, the first thing. And you might say, well, why do we choose uh, this condition that the even intersections have to be all distinct? Uh, and so you could also say, what if instead of you know forcing all of the indices to be distinct, we have some number of distinct ones. So at least some number. And so, that number here, we, we call T for, for threshold. Uh, you have the same setup, you have K families and the K wise intersections that have at least this threshold number of distinct indices have to be even and otherwise they're, they're odd. Um, and you recover an upper bound that looks like, like this. Um, and so, um, I don't want to talk too much about this, but you might notice there is uh, 
a gap. We can't do this for all T and K. And the last thing I wanted to uh, explore is why this might be a, a problem. Um, and I think the problem really comes down to the one family version, so not even the, the K family. Um, so if I have just one family and I force all of my sets to be odd, all of the pairwise intersections to be odd, and all of the three wise intersections to be even, uh, you can ask the following question, how large can such a family be? Okay, so uh, I guess remember odd, odd, even, because I might forget it too. So let's see. The first thing we're going to do is a construction. Um, so in my construction, my ground set's actually going to be all pairs of uh, integers one up to n. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to define my set A sub i to be the collection of, I'm gonna call them edges, such that um, i is contained in that edge. Okay, um, so uh, it's not too hard to see that the size of ai is n minus one. Now, if I take distinct a, i, and j, what's the size of the intersection? Well, I need a graph edge to contain both i and j. Um, and so there's going to be a unique graph edge that contains i and j. Uh, so this is one. Um, and the last thing is if I have three of them, well, I can't have a graph edge contain all three. So this has to be zero. Uh, and so this construction works if n is, let's see, even, um, so that n minus one is odd. And so what does this give? This gives a ground set n squared, and the size of my family is n. So it gives roughly n to the one half. So n to the one half is a lower bound here. Um, and the upper bound comes from uh, the following observation. So I'll call my sets A1 up to AM, and I'm going to define a new family, A prime, to be all of the, let's see, intersections A1 intersect AI, where I is between two and M. Um, and this family satisfies odd town rules. Um, if A is uh, in the form of the problem, um, in form of problem. So the uh, upper bound is then, I guess, technically N plus one. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, upper bound N plus one, lower bound N to the one half. I'm not sure what the answer is. So that's kind of what's um, playing a role, but. Yeah, thanks for, for listening. Cool. Let's uh, all thank Jason. Um, are there any quick questions, comments for, for Jason? I, I have a quick question, if yes. I may. So I know I, I really like this, the odd town problem. And, and there's a nice, I was particularly pleased when I found a combinatorial proof of it um, by, by Fedor Petrov. I don't know if you've seen it on, I found it on Math Stack Overflow. Um, and I just thought it was a really nice way of using the pigeonhole principle to, to get this lower bound for the odd town problem. I wondered if you might have looked into something like that. I, I actually, I haven't seen that, uh, that post. Oh, well, I, actually, I, will... I pulled it up here. I can post it in the oh. if you're interested. I pulled it up while you were talking. I'm so excited. Okay, no, 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 no worries. Let me. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I, I will. I will take a look at it. Um, okay. It was the first time I'd seen it not with linear algebra, and I thought that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other questions, comments for Jason? I'll just say, as always, I appreciate your commitment to the Flavor Town joke. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was blank on Guy Fieri's name, so I kind of butchered it. But uh... <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Uh, yeah. Any actual significant question, comments? 
If not, let's, uh, sorry, Alexander, you're going to say something? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, like, when you, when you deal with, like, these higher, m- more than two families, is there any sort of, like, higher dimensional rank, like slice rank or something that shows up in some of the arguments, or are they completely, like, of a different nature? Um, we, we haven't been able to figure anything out of that. Um, essentially, what you do is you uh, encode this as a graph theory problem for the Kinesar graph, um, which is, okay, vertex says all the sets of size K and edges are sort of disjoint um, intersections. Um, but yeah, we haven't done anything with slice rank. I'm not even sure if the, the bounds are um, something that slice rank would even help with, um, if that makes any sense, because it's, it's like sub linear. I hardly know anything about slice rank. Okay, I, just, yeah. I heard <laughs> just that there was like solve problems. higher dimensional analogs yeah. of matrices. I just wanted to ask about but Yeah, them. yeah, no, no. A, a valid question. Um, I guess, yeah, I, I'm not sure either. <laughs> I think I, um, I looked right. at slice rank at one point and it, it usually gives something like, you know, 1.7 to the N or something. Um, Very cool. So with this, let's uh, once again thank Jason for the lovely talk. Thank you.